Section 18, fuel injector testing. This chapter's fun. I, I really like this chapter. I think it's one that, that we can learn a lot from, and it's one that will apply not just to fuel injectors, will be any circuit that's ground side switched. So our focus in this, so we're clear in this section, is going to be for ground side switched fuel injectors. I, I, we need to make that note because things are changing. GDI is what has changed this and why I'm putting this note in here. On GDI systems, that's gas direct injection, the computer, the PCM, controls what? Controls both power and ground on these injector circuits. So we've got a little bit of a change up when it comes to GDI. This section is not for GDI tests. However, will this be a foundation for GDI systems? And the answer is absolutely it will be. So what I did on page two is I've given you a whole bunch of tests that we can do for fuel injectors. And Picture this as a drawer in your toolbox that has all your injector tools in it. And we're not going to use them all, all the time. And some of them might sit in the toolbox for a few years before you find the need for it. But I'm giving you as many as I can. And I try to keep it as simple as possible first. And that would be the sound test. And I mentioned that in section 17, doing a sound test on a fuel injector. And when we do sound testing, this is page three, we want to listen to the injectors for a click. A few things you need to understand. One, just because it clicks does not mean it's spraying fuel. So we're not using this as a absolute, hey, that injector's fine, it's spraying fuel. But if it's clicking, there's a real good chance it's also spraying. Now we can have plugged up nozzles and, and screens that would affect that. But this one's more of you have a single cylinder misfire and you want to know if the injector is working, you can put a long screwdriver on it, put the screwdriver to your ear. Some of you might want to use a stethoscope. That's fine too. The problem with a stethoscope is they're too sensitive. And if you listen to that injector, what you're going to hear is the injector next to it. I want a picture of an injector. This is... um. You gotta stay where you're at. In section 13, I have an intake manifold where I'm emphasizing a manifold runner, but this just gives us an idea where we're going to place our screwdriver. Okay? Let's say that we are concerned about this injector right here. Now, what would make us concerned with that injector? You've already identified the car has a single cylinder misfire. You've done an RPM drop test and you figured out that cylinder is not contributing. Is it spark, is it fuel, is it compression is what we're thinking about. Air fuel compression. So the injector part we can address by a sound test and you put a stethoscope on the body so you would place it on the body and you would listen to it right there. If you hear clicking that suggests the injector is firing. The problem is a stethoscope is so sensitive that you can hear this injector and this injector, which are also connected to the same fuel rail, you'll hear sounds from those ones too. And the clicking you're hearing is not the injector that you're listening to. How do we avoid this pitfall? Listen to one of the other cylinders that you're not worried about. When you did your RPM drop test, you know that this cylinder and this cylinder and this cylinder all contributed. So if they all contributed to the RPM of that engine, isn't it safe to say those injectors are working? Listen to the sound difference. And that's what I'm telling you to do. I said right here on page three, keep in mind that noises transfer. You know the Multec 2s I mentioned in section 17 that stick closed? I went to one of my garages and he's pretty sharp and um, it, it's more of a transmission shop but you know so they don't do a lot of the drivability type work but he's sharp enough to know 
that these injectors stick on this model. He called me and said the injector's fine and they tuned it up and he still has a misfire and compression's good. Can I come look at it? Sure, no problem. So I started with the RPM drop test and actually it had a single cylinder misfire OBD2. I could see the cylinder that was misfiring narrowed right in on the number one. Did a sound test with my screwdriver. I couldn't hear any clicking at all. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, I said, Micah, this injector's not firing. What do you mean? I could hear it clicking. He grabbed his stethoscope and listened to it. Could hear it plain as day. I'm like, let, let me see that. And I put his stethoscope, I hate stethoscopes because they hurt my ears. Mm -hmm. And I listened to it. I could hear that injector plain as day with his stethoscope. With my screwdriver, I couldn't hear it at all. What I'm suggesting you use? A screwdriver. <laughs> it deadens the sound a little bit. It was very evident though. If you listen to a good one, you can hear it plain as day. You could not hear it, the noise transfer as much as the stethoscope showed. So I'm just telling you to be careful, that's all. You want to do a sound test, great. You want to do it cranking, I don't know. I, this is probably not something that I would typically do. I would choose a different test. I would not, uh, I would probably not want to crank an engine over and listen to the injectors because that starter is really noisy. It's pretty tough to hear injectors clicking over a cranking engine. When I choose to do sound tests on injectors is when the car runs and has a single cylinder misfire. Do you guys understand though, if you don't have a scope and you don't have a noid light, you don't have a test light, that you can listen to injectors with a long screwdriver while your friend's cranking it. If it's a no start and you want to know are your injectors firing or not, you can do it, but it's just not my, pre my preferred method. Why? Because I always have a scope on me. I never leave home without it. And if I'm going somewhere that I need to do a no start, I'm certainly not going to forget my scope. Do you know what I mean? That doesn't mean, you know, you're hanging out with your friends at a house somewhere and this car doesn't start that you can't do some MacGyver type stuff. Hey, give me a long screwdriver or he doesn't have one. Let me see that broom handle. Take a listen. All right. So that's one. Another one we can do is this Noid light, I think that's where I'm going next. The Noid light test, let's see what's on the next page. Yeah, Noid light testing. All right, so a Noid light, it's a specific bulb, a light bulb that you would plug into the injector circuit. It's made specifically for that circuit. To put this in the circuit electrically, what we are doing is we are removing the injector connector. And what we are installing is a light bulb in its place. That's all we're doing. And we're looking to see if the light bulb flashes on and off. So let me ask you guys this. This Noid light test, is it testing the injector winding? Or is it testing the electrical circuit? The electrical circuit. If you have, and now, can we indirectly condemn a fuel injector with this test? We can. If the injector's not clicking, and you have a misfire, can we unplug the injector, plug in a noid light, make sure it flashes, and say the injector was bad? Let me say that again. Injector's not clicking, you have a misfire, you're thinking to yourself, I have an injector problem, no question, but you don't know if it's electrically a problem or if it's the injector itself. You unplug the injector, you install a noid light, and it flashes on and off, can we put an injector in that car? I would say yes. The controls are there to light the light bulb. Why is it not working the injector? Would be what we do with Noid lights. Okay? There are some warnings with that. One of them is the light bulb does not stress the circuit the same way the injector does. And I've measured varying variable. No, let me say that again. I've measured a whole bunch of different types of Noid lights, and all of them that I've measured current flow on are around 200 milliamps of current to light that bulb. Where, what is the average saturated switch fuel injector current? One amp would be the average saturated switch injector. And I said 0.7 on a lot of them. Mm -hmm. So let's say 0.7 to 1.0 amps. So that would be 700 to 1,000 milliamps is the typical fuel injector current do you understand that the bulb does not stress the circuit the same way? So could we have a feed circuit resistance problem that still fires the light bulb, but not the injector? 
Could we have resistance on the ground that does the same thing? Or could we have a driver issue? Guys, the answer is yes, but highly unlikely. I'm, I'm saying highly unlikely to the point that I have never seen it. If your light bulb's lighting on and off, you can be pretty confident that the circuit's fine and it's your injector that was at fault. Because even 200 milliamps is enough that if you have a wiring problem, you're, you're going to see it. You're going to see it in, in the form of that light bulb doesn't even light. Now, you could plug in a scenario where that could be an issue, but... All right, so starting with this, if this is what you're doing, there's a lot of things we can do. And I think the, the title up here says everything with my thought process. No clicking, single cylinder misfire, engine still runs. Why am I choosing that as a title? I think it's critical to start with this. Here's why. We're going to be doing ignition systems coming up, right? And what I don't want to do in this section is focus on cam and crank sensors. If this was a no start, no injector pulse, don't we have to think about computer inputs here? And what I'm trying to do in this section is to just isolate the output and not jump over to the input side. Does that make sense? And so I chose that title for that reason. I don't want to focus on the inputs. All right, there is an area here though that could we have, now as we continue through this, could we have an output on a single cylinder that's not functioning because of an input problem and it is possible and I do mention it in here but what I tried to do is stay away from that as much as possible so I chose this title engine still runs which means what you got cam crank signals right single cylinder misfire means what the other cylinders are working okay and I wanted to focus on the single injector drive circuit and again is this just, I know we're talking about fuel injectors here, but if you think about it, it, is this just the injector circuit as far as thought process here? No. It is any ground, side, switched output. Light bulbs, relays, solenoids, electric motors, injectors, ignition coils, it's going to be the same thought process. You're going to hear the same things you heard in section three, which is pretty cool. All right, so what we're doing, again, injectors removed. We've installed a light bulb in its place, okay? So this is not in the picture. We have a light bulb in its place. And I'm giving you three different scenarios. The Noid light doesn't flash, the Noid light flashes, or the Noid light is lit all the time. Those would be the three things that you're going to see, right? Engines running, obviously. If you're checking a fuel injector circuit, you would want the engine running, right? Some things should be able to not be said, but, you know, some people aren't thinking sometimes, especially when we're new at this. You might have the key on and say, why is my injector, or why is the Noid light not flashing? because um, you didn't start the car yet. It's a circuit that pulses on and off, okay? If the Noid light doesn't flash, then we could have a problem on the feed side. We could have a problem on the control side. We could have a problem with the driver, agree? All right, if the Noid light flashes, how's the feed, how's the control, how's the ground, or how's the driver? It's good. And then if the Noid light stays lit all the time, how is the feed? Feed's good. Now we have an issue, is the control wire sorted to ground or is the driver sorted to ground? And we'll address those in here and how to isolate them. Okay? Starting with the, the, the top one, we check our power feed to the injector. We check our control wire for opens. How would you do that? Start here. Make sure you have 12 volts. If you have 12 volts, your feed is good and your light bulb is good. Can we have a light bulb that has an issue? Steady 12 there. Light, it's not flashing. So next thing would be come over here and measure it. If you read 0 volts at the computer and 12 volts at the Noid light, you have an open in the wire. That's it. This is exactly D what we did with this Buick 
although we used the injector instead of the Noid light to do it. 12 volts at the injector, but what we had, we didn't have zero here, we had 12 at the computer which said what about the control wire? If it's 12 at the computer and 12 at the Noid light or good injector, a known good injector, then you have no problem with this control wire, you have a driver issue. And that's what we found on this car. Now why did I say a known good? If you have an injector that's open here, when you do your voltage measurements, you're going to read zero here, right? And you're going to read zero here. That really isn't helping you identify this issue. This is not what we're dealing with. The other thing, too, would be when you took this out and put your annoyed light in, your annoyed light would have flashed on and off because you had a bad injector. So this is not what we're doing. So we verified power supply, we measure voltage at the PCM with a known good injector or annoyed light plugged in. Why did I make that statement with known good injector? Because if you're measuring voltage here, you better make sure that this part of the circuit is intact because we're using voltage to tell us if we have an open. Some of you might be thinking, why not use an ohmmeter? Go ahead. You can if you want to. This is what I choose to do. I don't use the ohmmeter because I need a lead on both ends. So where is this end of the circuit? Way under the hood. Where is this end of the circuit? Way inside the car. My leads aren't that long. Can I just do voltage measurements and tell me if I have an open circuit? I can, but your voltage measurements require you to know that certain parts of the circuit are functional before you can do that voltage measurement. Following that thought process? Yes. Okay. So how important is it that we have a known good light bulb or known good injector installed when we're doing this voltage measurement at the computer. That's what we did on this Buick. We never used the Noid light when we did, and here's what we did. We can alter some of these tests. We have a fuel injector that was not functional, and when we measured this wire with a scope, voltmeter to ground, what we saw was flat line 14 volts. Now we did have some weird spikes in there on occasion, but this is what we saw. Our concern was what? Our concern was never with the injector winding. Why? Because feed voltage has to come through the winding for me to have 14 volts here. So I was never worried about the feed. I was never worried about the winding. We were worried about the driver from the get-go. We were worried about the control wire having opens from the get-go. In fact, looking at this, there would be no reason to install a noid light. The flat line 14 volts tells you that noise light's not going to flash, right? Yeah, you, we did. You, well, we did after just to show. You plug a noise light in there, it's not, going to, it's not going to flash. So what do we do? We either have an open in the control wire or we have an open in the driver. Measurement here told us where we were going. We had 14 volts at the computer too. How's the control wire? It's good. So where are we going? Faulty driver. All right, now, in this case, this old Buick, that's a $100 computer, no big deal. I feel confident, 100% here. If it's a $1,000 computer or a $2,000 computer, don't you think that you might want to do maybe it's some checks on the inputs? Just to make sure. Now, what are the chances that one injector driver doesn't fire from an input problem are slim to none because we have ignition system two and the ignition would be affected by a, a missing tooth or something on an input. But don't you think though we want to go a little further? Check computer powers and grounds and look at your inputs for sure. And, and I have that in here somewhere. Um, let me see if I can find it. Right here. I have it here. Example, I'm, I'm giving you those examples here. This would be this would be our scope test. So this is exactly what we're doing right here. Steady 12 volts on the control wire. That's what I just gave you guys, right? Up here on this generic picture. Steady, we didn't have 12 volts, I said 14. 
Everywhere I write 12 volts, are you guys comfortable with that just being battery voltage? Instead of writing battery voltage for all of these, 12 volts, 14 volts, 13 volts, 10 volts cranking, right? System voltage, what do we have at this injector? Steady, what? Steady 12 volts, so we could follow this guy here, right? Steady 12 volts on the control wire. What are we doing? I have this written down for you. We've already really covered this page, and what I'm telling you is if it reads 12 volts at the computer, then your wire's good. That's what we're addressing. If it reads zero volts at the computer, you have an open in the wire, fix the wire. 12 volts at the injector, zero volts at the computer, you have an open. And guys, this is the same across the board on everything you work on on the car. Same thing. So if we say we have a driver problem, we better make sure that we're checking our inputs and make sure they're good before we call the computer. We better make sure we check computer powers and grounds. We better make sure we check computer contact issues with the pins. Remember the pin drag test I showed you guys early in the term? Using those torch tip cleaning tools as a pin drag so we can check computer pins. And then there's one other one. This one right here. And we'll come back to that because I don't want to talk about that right now. We'll, we'll, we'll stay with the Noid lights and the testing there. So let me get you a flow here of what I'm, what I'm showing you. All the stuff that I just plugged in for you guys up here, you might be thinking to yourself, why didn't you write that down? I did. I just showed you part of it. Okay? When it comes time to check the driver, check the control wire, check for power, all that same stuff is done with the scope. That's what we're doing. So if my Noid light doesn't flash, it would be the same look down here. Let's see. Um, let me just see what I did here. Steady 12 volts, I did. Look, I wrote in here, Noid light doesn't flash, Noid light doesn't flash. Noid light flashes, Noid light flashes intermittently, Noid light on constantly. So you see what I did with page four is after we talk about it here, then we plug in our scope testing, voltmeter testing, and I plugged in what the Noid light would have been doing. So essentially I have all of this written down. The Noid light combined with the voltmeter would be the same test that we're doing here with the injector combined with the voltmeter or scope. It's the same thing. All right, so Noid light flashes, we covered this one. Noid light doesn't flash, we covered this one. To a certain extent. Where is to a certain extent? When we have this. When we come down here and we say PCM driver problems, is it time to change the computer? No, it is time to go down to my voltmeter scope page that we were just on and consider those other variables, okay? So that's what made me point that out right now. Let's say, let's put a note here maybe, right? C page what? C page six, right? C page six before replacing PCM, agree? What are the other variables? Inputs, powers, grounds, and then driver shut down from a misfire. Cat protection. We'll get to that. Okay, so we covered Noid light doesn't flash. We covered Noid light flashes. This one's pretty easy. If your Noid light is lit all the time, you have billows of white smoke coming out of the tailpipe. And I've gotten into a lot of debate over the years with people with this. Because everybody says, wait, if it's on all the time, it's rich, and rich is black smoke. That's what we're all taught. That's what we all have seen. The problem is, if you're not burning any of it, it's not going to be black. You're steaming raw fuel in a hot exhaust pipe. It will look like a head gasket. It will be white smoke. You don't believe me? I have a video on it. On a fuel injector it's right where is it at fuel injector noid light testing no that's this is a different one I have a video on this I have it hyperlinked in here somewhere where the injector it says um, stuck on fuel injector I think is the title all right noid lights lit all the time so is it 
we'll remove the injector, plug in the Noid light. It is lit all the time. Shouldn't be, right? Should a fuel injector ever be lit all the time or on all the time? No. What do we need to do? Either the control wire sorted to ground or the driver is sorted to ground. The test would be to unplug the computer. First thing I would probably do is just turn the engine off. Where was I? Sort, sort to ground in the control wire, sort to ground in the driver, one of the two. And oh, what I would suggest you do at this point is shut the car off. Turn the key back on and attack the circuit with just the key on. We don't need the car running anymore. We don't need all that fuel going down the tailpipe, okay? So you got the key on, the Noid light is lit, okay? Hopefully. Hopefully it's still lit with the key on. I'll talk about this variable in a second. So, key's on, Noid light's lit, circuit sorted to ground, unplug the computer, turn the key off, unplug the computer, turn the key back on. If your Noid light is still lit, where was your sort? It's in the wire. It's not the computer. If you unplug the computer, turn the key back on, and the Noid light goes out, then it's not the wire, it's the computer. It's a pretty simple test. Does that make sense? There's a problem here, and that is the computer supplies power to relays sometimes, and those relays power up the injectors and other circuits. And when you take the, and unplug the computer, you've lost your injector power feed. So it's a BS test. In other words, what you were using as your isolation by unplugging the computer, if the light goes out, it's a bad computer sorted driver. What you didn't realize is the computer shut the power or it controls power to the injector and you lost your power feed. So let, let, me, let me say it like this. Noid light is lit. You unplug the computer, Noid light goes out. All of our focus goes to this guy, right? Our ground was coming from the computer all the time. It's a bad computer because the light went out. What you didn't realize is the computer controls the power feed and now with the computer unplugged, the computer doesn't control the power feed, so we have zero volts here all the time and the reason the light went out is because you lost power feed, not because you lost the ground. And what you had was a short to ground in the wire and you changed the computer because the light went out and it was a $2,000 mistake. How do we avoid this? When you're doing this, look, capital letters with like eight exclamation points. What am I telling you to do when you unplug this computer? Make sure you still have feed voltage available to that fuel injector, otherwise it is a test that is incorrect. So would you have a voltmeter hooked up? Yes. And this is, yes, I would have a voltmeter hooked up here, Billy. And so I'm showing you guys how to use a Noid light and how we can use one to guide us. But isn't really, when it comes time to it, aren't we still having a voltmeter <coughs> connected to it? Or aren't we also doing scope testing on these injectors? And really, you can use a voltmeter, okay? But the problem is, these injectors turn on and off so fast, you can't see an injector waveform with a voltmeter. We really need a scope to check fuel injectors. And now, once you have a scope, you never use the Noid light anymore. I'm showing the Noid light method. How often do I use a Noid light? Almost never. I'll share a case study with you later where the Noid light would have been my friend though. And the scope got me in trouble. So some of these basic tools can be your friend. But the Noid light is a test light. You guys understand that? I prefer using my test light. I don't even own Noid lights. I use my test light as a Noid light. And I just back probe it and T-pin it and switch my polarity depending on what I'm doing. In fact, for this test, the test light, that's what I'm saying here, the above testing must be altered. The test light's your better tool because here, here's what happens. Forget the Noid light. I have the injector unplugged, baby, because it's spraying all the time. You guys with me? Our concern is a short to ground because of the, it's billowing clouds of white smoke. And I've identified this circuit on the scope being zero volts all the time. I know it's on all the time, so I take my test light to battery positive. 
and I use that instead of the Noid light. Why is this better? It's better because I know my test light has power all the time. Mm -hmm. Test light's lit. What do we do? Unplug the computer. Test light goes out. Faulty, faulty computer driver. No question about it. Unplug the computer, test light stays lit, we have sword to ground there. But the reason I like this better is because I have power feed there all the time. I don't have to worry about it. You would just hook your test light to battery positive. Correct. I would hook my test light to battery positive. So now the naysayers come in and say, well, wait a minute, that test light, you're going to hurt that computer driver, right? How am I going? No, it's not unplugged yet. Initial testing, right? Our computer's plugged in. This goes back to where uh, people were saying that the test light will burn something out or something. But you were telling us yeah, this goes back to knowing what test light you're using. And knowing the test light you're using is 200 milliamp bulb and the injector draws one amp of current. You're way under what that injector would be drawing. How are you going to hurt the computer here? This tool, this is your best friend for this test. Is it the driver or is it the control wire? Test light to battery positive. Unplug the computer. If the test light goes out, guess what? You're done. That driver in the computer is absolutely bad. And it was that, it was that dangerous, quotes, dangerous test light that should never be used on computer circuits that was your best friend for this job. Bad computer. I'm going to end it there because too much shop noise and all that crap. But that's good enough for today anyway. Uh, when we visit this later, we will we'll do the scope stuff. And this is all, guys, listen. This is all a review for Section 3, which is really cool. So, and then we'll, we'll throw in some case studies, too, of some waveforms and known goods and known bads and things like that.